the last stronghold of rebel and terror groups in Syria, the northern province of Idlib, is right now surrounded by the Syrian army. With a decisive battle looming, civilians are fleeing the area through humanitarian corridors set up by the Syrian government and Russia. The Syrian army, meanwhile, is sending reinforcements to Idlib, such as uh, tanks, artillery and other military equipment. Officers say their troops are ready for the final battle against militants. But as of right now, they are waiting for the order. And as tensions mount in Idlib, the Russian Center for Syrian Reconciliation says it's received intelligence on the delivery of toxic substances to the province with the help of the white helmets to later be used in staging a false flag attack. Russia has previously warned that militants are preparing to stage a chemical attack. And the issue has been the subject of heated debate at the UN Security Council. Syrian armed forces have no chemical weapons and no plans to use them. There is no military necessity for it. We've said this many times before. It is not enough for the Russians to assert that the Syrians have no chemical weapons. There are very many inaccuracies and inconsistencies. Sensible people will not use militarily useless means to draw the fire of three powerful countries upon themselves. We have no information about chlorine being delivered and therefore if the Russian ministry does have that the most probable explanation is that it is a preemptive attempt to set the agenda and the narrative for an appalling attack to come. We consider it as an invitation to the armed rebel groups to stage another chemical attacks as they did it in Eastern Ghouta, Duma. It's very clear to us and our partners that this is an effort to distract uh, from an imminent uh, attack on Idlib. Artis Murad Gazdiev has more on how the involvement of the international community in the Syrian war has made the potential escalation an extremely risky scenario. Idlib is shaping up to be the end, a last showdown between jihadists and the Syrian army. It is the last remaining stronghold of Islamists and rebels. What's worse is the foreign power buildup in the region. Out of the blue, U.S. cruise missile delivery systems, guided missile destroyers, strategic bombers, are rebasing and dropping anchor near Syria, days after the U.S. and its allies warned they'd take action if chemical weapons are used by Assad. As we have demonstrated, we will respond appropriately to any further use of chemical weapons by the Syrian regime. And Russia, which is beefing up its own presence, warns that it's the Islamists that are planning just that. The U.S. continues to expand its presence of cruise missile carriers in the Middle East, which is connected to the preparations for another false flag incident, allegedly involving chemical weapons. Russian reports of U.S. military buildup in the Eastern Med are nothing more than propaganda. It's not true. That does not mean, however, that we're unprepared to respond should the president direct such an action. The United States denies building up its forces, but says it's ready to attack Syria if need be. The good news is that Russia and the United States are also apparently in talks to prevent any potential use of chemical weapons. But the danger remains, the worst-case scenario, an international escalation. Militarily, the rebels stand little chance against the Syrian army. What could save them is a foreign intervention caused by, for example, a staged chemical attack. <laughs> that is what happened last time, say the Russians. A staged incident in Ghouta that led to a U.S., French and British cruise missile barrage against Syria. This time, what with the military buildup, the stakes and risks of an escalation will be much higher. But it hasn't begun yet. There will be a big conference on Friday, but chances of a peaceful resolution look slim.
The Russian Reconciliation Center has been trying to broker a deal, but the jihadists remain defiant. Worst of all is that there are as many as two million civilians in Idlib trapped between jihadists and the Syrian army. If talks fall through, if chemical weapons are used, if this battle drags on, civilian casualties will soar, not to mention the danger of an international escalation. An escalation is imminent. How that develops, we don't know whether it goes um, uh, very fierce, uh, in the form of a very fierce confrontation between Jabhat al-Nusra on one side and its allies, and Syrian army and its allies on the other side. We don't know. We hope that it goes as it went in other areas, like most recently in Dara in southern Syria, where um, faction leaders understand that this is a force that they cannot um, compete with or fight uh, effectively, and they save their people and their cities a lot of destruction and death. So in that case, um, you know, people could go back to uh, under government control uh, as soon as possible and to normality, basically, and as soon as possible. And we understand that many of them um, are hoping to achieve such a thing. The Trump administration is threatening to bomb Syria in a event of chemical weapons attacks. Well, this as the Syrian army prepares an offensive to take control of the al-Qaeda-dominated province of Idlib. RT's Dad Cohen has the story. When the Trump administration launched dozens of missiles on Damascus in April, it had no evidence a chemical weapons attack had even occurred, let alone who may have been responsible for it. Now, National Security Advisor John Bolton is threatening another attack. Just so there's no confusion here, uh, if the Syrian regime uses chemical weapons, we will respond very strongly. Uh, and they really ought to think about this uh, a long time uh, before they come to any decision, uh, because there's no ambiguity in the U.S. position uh, on this point. Piers Robinson, professor of propaganda studies at the University of Sheffield, is co-author of a new briefing on the Duma attack. He says Bolton's statement creates an incentive for groups who seek U.S. military intervention. These kind of statements coming from Bolton should really cause all of us to be very alert to the possibilities of um, attacks being carried out, which might be well authored by opposition groups who are seeking to draw in um, and getting America to do exactly what Bolton has just threatened America would do if there was a chemical weapons event in Syria. While the Organization for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons' final report has not yet been released, its interim report found no evidence of sarin or any other nerve agent, ruling out the claims of both U.S. and U.K. officials. On April 13th, the White House released a statement claiming, quote, a significant body of information points to the regime using chlorine in its bombardment of Duma, while some additional information points to the regime also using the nerve agent sarin. CNN reported an anonymous U.S. official's claim that, quote, biological samples from the area of the alleged chemical attack in Syria have tested positive for chlorine and a sarin-like nerve agent. While nerve agents have been ruled out, the briefing details several factors indicating that the incident was not a chlorine attack, but was a staged massacre. Among them are the fact that the victims were lying close together in an apartment building and appear to have made no attempt to escape, and the unlikely positioning of one gas cylinder on a small balcony and another on a bed with indications a fire was lit under it in order to release its contents. And that leaves us really with very big question marks as we set out in the briefing as to exactly what occurred uh, in Duma and does sort of increase the likelihood that this was uh, an event that was staged by Jash al-Islam possibly or an opposition group um, in order to create uh, the momentum and the political will to take action against Syria. With al-Qaeda's top commander vowing to fight the Syrian army until the end, some might wonder who would benefit from U.S. intervention. Reporting in Washington, Dan Cohen, Russia's Defense RT. Ministry has warned of an imminent provocation being prepared in Syria, one that will see terrorists stage a chemical attack and lay the blame on the Assad government. A strike on Kefa Zaita using poison-laden missiles is planned within the next 48 hours. 
Thus, some players outside the region are preparing yet more provocations on Syrian soil involving chemical weapons, with the aim of destabilizing the situation there and undermining the positive dynamics of the ongoing peace process. Earlier, I spoke to RT's Don Quarter about the story. Well, the latest report comes from residents from the Idlib province in Syria, and they say that a group of civilians is being trained in a nearby area called Kafir Zaita to carry out the aftermath of a chemical attack to be blamed on the Assad government. Now, eight barrels of chlorine have already been apparently delivered there, and the White Helmets are ready to perform a fake rescue, basically, as the ministry uh, says. They want to send footage to Arab and English-speaking media outlets. Um, and we asked the White Helmets for their comment on, this, on their involvement in the situation, but they have yet to respond. Now, Moscow has raised concerns not just about the, the possible actions of those on the ground, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Just a few days ago, quite out of the blue, actually, uh, John Bolton said that Washington would be willing to respond very strongly if it thinks that the Assad government potentially used chemical weapons. Let's hear what he had to say. Uh, we now see plans for the... Uh, now, Syrian interestingly regime. enough, around the same time as John Bolton's statement, the USS The Sullivans was deployed to the Persian Gulf. And according to the Russian Defense Ministry, this is a destroyer-class ship armed with cruise missiles. And the ministry also claims that the U.S., the U.K., and France might be prepared for a strike there. Now, Idlib province, what is the situation there at the moment? Who controls what? Well, it's the last terrorist stronghold in Syria. After the Syrian government's victory in and around Damascus, they cut a peace deal, where saving thousands of civilian lives. But the trade-off was safe passage for the remaining terrorists in the area. They were sent in buses to Idlib. Now, four terrorist groups now control that area, the most powerful being Hayat Tahrir Asham, formerly known as al-Nusra, ties to al-Qaeda. And the others are Arar al-Sham, Jaysh al-Islam, and Naur al-Din al-Zinki. Now, they're not exactly unified. They started warring, putting uh, thousands of civilians in danger. There's already reports regularly coming out of the area of beheadings, caging people, and even using people as uh, human shields. And other reports are suggesting that some of these groups are gathering for a final push against government areas, hoping to stage both a chemical attack and to gain support from the West. Um, now, the situation is made even more fragile because this, this specific area was deemed a de-escalation zone after negotiations between Russia, Turkey and Iran. So, with these reports pointing to Western intervention, the reorganization of terrorist groups, it's hard to see how any de-escalation de would happen anytime soon. The Syrian army began its operation to liberate Dara on June the 18th. Just weeks later, almost all of the southwestern province is under the army's control. Analysts are describing the victory as symbolic for the government. It was in Dar'a city where militants kicked off the war on Syria with an armed campaign against the government back in 2011. The liberation of Dar'a is also being described as strategic. The province neighbours Jordan. Militants are reported to have crossed this border with quite some ease. It's here in Jordan where Damascus accuses the CIA of running a programme supporting the militants with money, weapons, training, logistics and intelligence. There were reportedly 40 different militant groups in Dar'a. Reports suggest Washington eventually lost patience with the militants and shut the program down. However, the support was literally showcased as the Syrian army came across large stocks of American-made weapons. Monitoring groups say those weapons made their way into terrorists' hands. Government troops also took control of the international Nasib border crossing on the Jordanian border, a very strategic and vital trade route. Some, some 5,000 rather cargo trucks passed through here every month. Syria will be looking to revive that much needed trade to boost its economy. There's a small area west of Dara city which is still in the hands of terrorists. El Shajara town here and its neighboring villages are in the hands of the so-called Khalid ibn al-Walid army, an affiliate of the Daesh Takfiri terrorist groups. The Syrian army is expected to launch an operation here very soon. The army is also on the verge of recapturing the neighboring Qunaitra province, literally adjacent to the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. UN troops have been scattered along this region here since 1974 
acting as a buffer zone. Government forces have already captured strategic hilltops over here in the Al-Hara area. An agreement has been reached to evacuate terrorists from Qunaitra, and this would effectively restore government control over the majority of southwestern Syria in what has been a sweeping operation. Now, the Russian Air Force and the Hezbollah resistance movement have backed the Syrian army's fight against militants and terrorists. Israel has repeatedly warned against any Hezbollah forces helping the Syrian army near the occupied Golan Heights. However, observers say Tel Aviv hasn't spoken out against Al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front terrorists who have been operating in this area here for years now. Damascus accuses Israeli forces of supporting these terrorists with weapons and medical treatment. Only one major region remains in the hands of terrorists. That's the northwestern Idlib province. We've seen over the past few years, whenever there was an evacuation deal to accompany a ceasefire in Syria, terrorists and militants demanded to go to Idlib, be that Aleppo, Homs, Hama, the Lebanese border, or the Damascus countryside, even in Dar'a recently, in a Russian broken ceasefire agreement, militants asked to be sent to Idlib. There are many different terrorist groups operating in the province. Sources say Damascus has been planning for a while now how to best go about liberating this province. It's not going to be easy. However, many experts say one thing is for certain. Liberating Idlib will spell the beginning of the end of the now seven-year war The Syrian on government Syria. says it is ready to recapture the last major rebel stronghold in the country, that of Idlib. Damascus has been deploying additional forces on the front line of the enclave, though it says it's still willing to pursue a course of reconciliation. However, that idea was earlier snubbed by the key militant group controlling the area, that of Tahrir al-Sham. The group's chief has warned other factions from taking part in any talks with Damascus. Meanwhile, the Russian defense ministry has warned that militants in Idlib are preparing a provocation. Moscow says it has intelligence that jihadists are getting ready and intending to stage a chemical attack and then to lay the blame on the Assad government. A strike on Kefa Zaita using poison-laden missiles is planned within the next 48 hours. Thus, some players outside the region are preparing yet more provocations on Syrian soil involving chemical weapons, with the aim of destabilizing the situation there and undermining the positive dynamics of the ongoing peace process. More, the missive warns that it's the White Helmets, a pro-rebel group, that'll be there first with cameras and tweets, as they usually are whenever there are rumors of chemical attacks. And we reached out to them for comment. And, as is also usual, the U.S. and its pals stand ready with guns drawn. It's getting very hot in the area. America has just pulled up another guided missile cruiser packed with Tomahawk missiles, the weapon of choice when attacking Syria. Also, U.S. strategic bombers, heavy-duty stuff, have just arrived in the neighborhood. The Russians are also acting, moving more and more ships to the Mediterranean. Rumors say submarines, too. And it's all dreadfully reminiscent of what happened last time. Weeks before the alleged chemical incident in Ghouta, the incident that provoked a British, French, and U.S. missile barrage. Well, mere weeks before that, the Russians warned that rebels were preparing to stage a chemical attack. Now they're warning it'll happen again, which begs the question, why, oh, why would Assad, who has almost won this war, why would he launch a chemical attack and invite disaster now? There is no value for Syria or its allies 
in using chemical weapons against any of the, uh, the the terrorists. Syria is already winning. Syria has already won along with its allies, along with Russia and with Iran and Hezbollah. They have already essentially defeated the Takfiri terrorists. It's now cleanup time. The other thing you've got is we have so many times been told that the Organization for the Prohibit Prohibition of Chemical Warfare has emptied Syria of all of its chemical weapons. This happened a few years ago, but we keep getting told Syria is making an announcement chemical just minutes weapons. ago that they're going to impose new sanctions on Russia. These sanctions come in response to the poisoning of former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia, the United Kingdom, blaming Russia for using a military-grade Soviet-era nerve agent that nearly killed them on UK soil. Moscow has denied that charge. CNN's Jim Shudo joins me now. And Jim, what can you tell me about these sanctions? Well, the first thing we should note is that these sanctions are required by law, long existing U.S. law, when a country, when it's determined by the U.S. that a country has used chemical weapons, as the U.S. has determined here, that Russia used a chemical weapon to commit, attempt to kit, commit murder on U.K. soil. Uh, we should note that the Trump administration is imposing these sanctions about 30 days after the deadline uh, imposed by that law, but they are following the law as it's written. Uh, you have two potential rounds here. The first round of sanctions, uh, relatively light. It can affect some exports, some financing. The real test is going to be if Russia does not allow uh, inspections of chemical weapons facilities and does not make assurances they will not use chemical weapons again, then there are even harsher sanctions that, that, that could ban all imports and exports and diplomatic relations. That will really be the real test for this administration. Interesting. So their hands is forced. They're kind of in, in doing this because they have to. Yes. That's the law. Russia may deploy nuclear weapons to Syria in response to the U.S. policy of imposing sanctions over Moscow crossing red lines. A senior Russian lawmaker has warned Vladimir Gutnev, first deputy head of the Economic Policy Committee of the State Duma, the lower chamber of the Russian parliament, said it is time for Russia to draw its own red lines. Among such measures, the official said the deployment of Russian tactical nukes in countries such as Syria, the use of gold-linked cryptocurrencies for Russian arms exports and the suspension of a number of treaties with the U.S such as non-proliferation of missile technologies. Mr. Gutnev said, I believe that now Russia has to draw its own red lines. The time has come to ponder on variants of asymmetric response to the U.S., which are now being suggested by experts and are intended not only to offset their sanctions but also to do some retaliatory damage. It's no secret that serious pressure is being put on Russia and it will only get worse. It is intended to deal a blow to defense cooperation, including defense exports. The minister added that Russia should follow the advice of experts and follow the U.S. example of deploying nuclear weapons in other countries. He added, we should follow the advice of certain experts, who say that Russia should possibly suspend the implementation of treaties on non-proliferation of missile technologies and also follow the U.S. example and start deploying our tactical nuclear weapons in foreign countries. It is possible that Syria, where we have a well-protected air base, may become one of those countries. Commenting on sanctions already in place, Mr. Gutnev said they are unlikely to do serious damage to Russia's defense industry. He continued, the import substitution program has produced very good results. Alternative suppliers have been found. However, we are concerned about the fact that the sanctions are still gaining momentum and have become somewhat imminent. The U.S. hit Russia with a fresh batch of sanctions on August 22 over its alleged involvement in the poisoning of former spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter in Salisbury. Sergei and his daughter Yulia were found unconscious on a bench near the Maltings shopping center in Salisbury. The